The Insta360 Link webcam just received not one, but two successors, the Link 2 and the Link 2C. But why are there two of them, and what's the difference? Well, today we're gonna find out. We're gonna throw these in a head-to-head -head gauntlet of challenges. On the left, we have the Link 2. On the right, we have the Link 2C, 199, 149, starting with tracking. Okay, as you can see, neither of these are following my movement, but if we go ahead and do the palm gesture, oh, actually, the one on the right does seem to react quicker. They both are tracking. That's fascinating considering this one doesn't even have a gimbal. You can see that the Link 2 is very clearly following me around the entire room. But the thing to note here is that even the one without the gimbal does track, which I'm not completely sure I've seen that in a stationary webcam before. It looks like the Link 2 on the left uses AI tracking and the Link 2C on the right uses auto framing, which apparently is supposed to work even better with groups of people, which that feature is new compared to the original Insta360 Link. This could only do single target tracking, whereas both of these can hypothetically handle tracking groups of people. If only I had a group of friends to help show off this feature. <laughs> hey, uh, it's just me. All my friends are sleeping. It's like 2.30 in the morning. But regardless, this tracking was a closer race than I would have expected. The point is still obviously going to go to the gimbal one because it can literally follow me around the entire room. Apparently another tracking feature that the Link 2 can do that the 2C cannot is this concept of what's it called? Pause areas. Let me see if I can set it up. Okay, so this concept of pause areas allows me to essentially identify places around the room where I don't want it to track me. So if I set that as our pause area, so now hypothetically, if I'm walking and talking and tracking over here and I get to the graphics card, oh, it actually does zoom in, the 40 series. Hey, look at that. And then it just kind of, you know, jumps back to tracking me. But again, that pause tracking is only available in the Link 2, not the uh, not the 2C. Okay, now let's take a look at the privacy mode for each of these to see which one handles it better. For the Link 2, I believe you just simply point it downwards, goes offline right away. The Link 2C obviously doesn't have a gimbal, but instead it has this little toggle on the side here, where if you push it down, uh, again, it blocks the screen immediately. But as you can see down in OBS, they are both retaining audio. So I believe that is a setting that we can change in the Link controller. Ah, uh, yep, right there, you can mute in privacy mode. Kind of weird that it's not automatically enabled, but I, I suppose that's just how it works. So if you go down like this now, it should be muted. Yep, just like that. But which one is deserving of the point here? Yeah, this is so satisfying to see the like four pieces come together like that, to cover the lens. Although I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of seeing red constantly. So if you're not using your webcam for most of the day, you are going to have to stare at this little red dot, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, but uh, that actually might be enough for me to say that the Link 2 has a better privacy entering mode. So we're gonna give the point to the Link 2, although that is super satisfying. Next up, touch control, since we are talking about the physical webcams themselves. So I do believe this is a touch screen here. Okay, so if you do double tap on the 2C, it uh, zooms in a little bit, and if you tap again, it zooms out. That's kind of cool. Does tapping once do anything? Nope, just the two. Okay, now over here, it's, it might be a little confusing. I don't think you can tap here. You actually have to tap this little circle target right there. So it turns out double tapping on the Link 2 recenters it back to center. And if you just tap it once, that's how you enable tracking. And then if you tap it once again, that disables tracking. So it's nice you have more options with the Link 2. Although I think tapping this big area is actually a lot easier on the Link 2C. So I'm actually gonna give the point to the Link 2C because it's not obvious to me that that is a little target area for you to touch. I would have pressed up there like I would have over here. So I think this one's just a little more intuitive. But now let's talk about picture quality because that is a huge deciding factor when it comes to picking out your webcam. As you can see here, we have a 4K half inch sensor in the right one. And we also have a 4K half inch sensor on the left one. Turns out they use the exact same sensor, meaning that on paper, the quality should be equally as nice. But let's take a look inside the software to confirm. So this is the Link 2. By default, it's running 1080p at 30 FPS. Looks like we can go up to 4K and 30 FPS as well. Give it a second to reload and boom. Yeah. But now if we switch over to the Link 2C, by default, we are still at 1080p 30 and we can go up to 4K 30 as well. So if we switch it to there, yeah, that again is 4K. That's kind of crazy. I really didn't expect these to have the exact same picture quality, especially with one being $50 cheaper than the other. But for quality, it's exactly the same. You can't pick a winner. So each get a point. On to the next challenge, gestures. Now the original Insta360 Link did have a handful of hand recognition gestures. So to see if those exist in both of these, well, the open palm is for tracking. And so we did try this earlier. We know this one works. So that is a very quick way to get in and out of the tracking mode. Another one was zooming in with an L or zooming out. So here we go, if we try both of them. Well, it's actually interesting that the 2C seems to respond quicker, but it does seem to have a little bit of a zoom out issue if it can't see my hand fully, whereas the other one seems to have like a larger FOV 
at least in its current state. It's kind of funny, I do use the link as my main webcam. Apparently I talk a lot with my hands because sometimes on conference calls, I'll accidentally make an L shape and the thing will just zoom right into my face. But thankfully in the software itself, you can disable or enable any one of these hand recognition gestures. So I always typically leave the zoom off. But with that, it does seem like both of them handle gestures the same way and honestly respond just as smoothly. So you're both getting a point for this one. Okay, the next challenge is true focus. Essentially being able to change focuses as things get closer or farther away. Now the way this works is through phase detection. And so as you can see in this camera, when the dragon gets close, it hypothetically should be in focus. Let's see if the webcams can do it. And if so, which one is better? Starting with the Link 2, as we bring the dragon closer, as we can see, it is pretty much immediately in focus. Bring it back, I'm in focus. Push it forward, immediately in focus. Now switching over to the Link 2C. Oh yeah, it just immediately goes into focus again. Doesn't really surprise me since again, this does have the exact same camera sensor. This is one of those features that it's really easy to take for granted, but as soon as your webcam doesn't just autofocus like this, you will notice, and it is really annoying when you hold something up and it stays blurry. But really, no difference between the Link 2 and the Link 2C. So again, they both get a point. Pretty neck and neck competition. So now it's time for the desk view challenge. And this is actually a feature that the original Link had as well, where you could actually see a really nice top-down view of this, you know, this area right in front of your desk. So to set this up, I need something cool to put on my desk. Here, we'll use this little cookie that actually has thermal paste baked inside of it. You shouldn't eat it, but it is cool to look at. So in the link controller down here, we have desk view mode. And so if I enable that, this webcam just immediately shot downward. Probably works a lot better for like pieces of paper. Oh yeah, that's way better. Here you basically have a top-down view of this piece of paper, even though it's angled at like a 45 degree angle. So that was fairly seamless with the Link 2. Let's see if the Link 2C can even do this. So if we switch over to the Link 2C and click desk view mode. Oh, okay. So this obviously is not the picture that I intended, but it is sort of like the right type of like morphing. So if I manually adjust this, we can get to the point where now it does seem like we have a pretty nice top-down view of the piece of paper. We did have to manually kind of tilt this to be looking at our piece of paper. But the fact that you can still enable this desk view mode with the 2C, well, good to know. That said, it still was way easier with the Link 2. So that's getting the point. And if we take a look down here, we can also see whiteboard mode. So that's going to be the next challenge. How well can these identify whiteboards? Similar to desk view, whiteboard mode was also available in the original Link. However, you always needed to have these little markers on each corner of the whiteboard. And so the Link 2 and the Link 2C both come with more of these whiteboard markers. But the feature that I actually want to try out is the smart whiteboard mode. Because if I'm honest, I'm definitely going to lose these markers with the like a couple weeks of having a webcam, which would be an issue if you had the original link. However, apparently these new link twos identify whiteboards without the markers. So if we just go ahead and select whiteboard mode with the 2C. Oh, let's go grab a whiteboard. Like I said, it's late. So we will have to be quiet not to wake up the baby. Whiteboard is found. It has like a little schedule and some graph theory. I'm just gonna set a whiteboard up on my chair like this. Let's rescan the area. Oh my gosh, yeah, okay, that worked really well. Instantaneously recognized it was a whiteboard and auto-zoomed to it. Let me see if I can make this like a bit more difficult to see if it can keep up. So instead of the whiteboard just being right front and center, get back a little bit, the angle it a little bit. Now if we come back here and press the whiteboard button, it scans and it finds. All right, so that was the Link 2C. Let's go ahead and switch over to the Link 2. All right, so now we have the Link 2 activated. Go ahead and click Smart Whiteboard. Okay, so this is interesting because the gimbal is tracking me and I'm standing a little bit to the right, the whiteboard actually isn't in frame at all. So we could manually add a whiteboard, that's kind of nice, but I want it to automatically detect it. So I kind of have to like position it so it can already see it a little bit and then it finds it instantaneously. Okay, that is kind of an interesting potential trade-off of using the gimbaled version over the non-gimbaled version is because it's tracking you all over the place, if your whiteboard is across the room and it's tracking you on the other side of the room, it's not gonna automatically find it. It's not looking around for the whiteboard. It does have to be in frame. So honestly, even though they work kind of the same, I'm gonna give the point to the Link 2C because I didn't have to readjust anything, even with the whiteboard being in the exact same spot in the room. All right, Link 2C gets a point, which means now we're moving on to audio. There's now three new audio modes. Test the audio. I wanna hear how it sounds on a conference call. So right now we're using the built-in microphone in the laptop. But soon I'm going to switch over to, to the Link 2 microphone so we can hear how that sounds. And now I'm going to switch over to the Link 2C audio so we can hear how that sounds as well. By default, we're using the voice focus mode, but now let's go over to voice suppression. So I'm going to play some background crowd noises. 
just like that. Hopefully you can hear the crowd of people behind me. And now let's see what happens if we switch over to the link two. So we can hear what it sounds like when there's still a crowd of people talking right next to me. Now switch over to the link to C to again, see how it sounds with people talking right next to us. The third and final mode is the music balance mode, kind of meant for streamers or musicians who want to have music in the background also amplified along with their voice. I'm going to just play some non-copyrighted music off my phone so we can hear how that sounds. This is again, the laptop audio. Let's go ahead and switch over to the link to audio. Just like that, so we can hear how the music balance works with music playing in the background that we don't want to disappear like in voice suppression. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the link to C audio to hear how that works with music balance as well. Hopefully that gave you an idea of the audio. I won't know how it sounds until I go back and edit this. So at that point, I will assign a winner. And if they're the same, they each get a point. And now our final challenge of our webcam head to head series is controlling the webcams remotely. Cause let's be honest, we covered a ton of features and there's a lot of settings in the desktop controller app, but it's also a little overwhelming. That's one of the downsides of webcams getting more and more complicated. There's just more to remember, more to adjust and figure out. And again, something that's new compared to the original link is that these link twos have a way to control control it with your phone. So if we bring up this little QR, apparently we should be able to get full control. Oh, look at that. I'm pulling left. It's going left. I can flip it horizontally and vertically. I can even enable the desk view mode and the whiteboard mode directly from my phone. Ooh, that's way nicer. And even more convenient, if you have two webcams plugged in like I do, you can just switch in between them. So it looks like the settings themselves are different as expected. The gimbal one has the gimbal link to, we can move around with our thumb, the stationary link to see, not so much, but we can still switch into desktop mode. We can go into auto framing. There we go. Press of a button. And it does look like we have every option here on our phone than we would on the desktop app itself. It's really nice that this is not a phone app that we have to download. It's just running in the browser. So as long as we're on the same Wi-Fi as the device that the webcam is plugged into, we should be able to control everything about it. Check it out. Change virtual backgrounds without even touching the computer. All right, that is pretty cool. But again, since both webcams kind of treated that the same way, we're gonna have to give a point to each of them since one was not better than the other. And with that, I think our Olympics has been completed. I can't think of any other crucial features to try out with these webcams right now, but if you can think of anything else, please let me know in the comments down below. And of course, that means we're crowning the link to the winner of this very first Olympics. But honestly, these two webcams are a lot more similar than they are different. At first glance, you would think that they would be a lot different since one's on a gimbal and one stationary, but the fact they have the exact same sensors, they have a lot of the same features. The Link 2C, even while stationary, does allow some type of smart tracking. It's really going to come down to how you plan on using the webcam if you're really thinking between the Link 2 and the Link 2C. Personally, it seems like if you're an active streamer who wants to move around a lot, the Link 2 is an obvious choice, but if you're more just a corporate worker who's going to be in meetings all day, well, the Link 2C seems pretty solid for that. Personally, I'm super happy with the price decrease from the original Link back in 2022. This one being 200 bucks and this one being 150 is much more reasonable. But let me know which one that you're leaning more towards and what use case you plan on using it for. I'll leave links to both of these down in the description below just in case you want to learn more. That's all I have for you today. So thanks for watching. A big thanks to Insta360 for sending these out for me to play with. But with that, I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh yeah.